Hi grade 8, this video is going to be on laws 3 and 4 for exponents. Um, in class we've actually done a little bit of laws 3 and 4 but just because I haven't seen you and I, we haven't actually had a chance to carry on our lesson I'm basically going to whip through what we've done in class and then introduce the new stuff. So let's have a look at law 3. Law 3 we've done before, law 3 says when you raise a power to another power you multiply the exponents. I should have said you multiply the exponents. So this should be in your book already, but if it's not, make sure that you have somewhere written down the fact that law 3 says when you raise a power to another power you multiply. So for example, I've just put three examples here. If you have x to the power of 2 and then raised to the power of 4, that's called raising a power to another power because you have a power and then another exponent. Now this means you multiply, so 2 times 4 is 8. Next one, if you have y to the power of 4, then raised to the power of 3, you multiply the 4 and the 3, and you get x to the power of 12. And then finally, if you have x to the power of 10, all raised to the power of 5, you multiply those together, and you get x to the power of 50. Now the only problem is, remember what I said in class, once we start doing multiplying exponents, then we get confused with law 1. So don't forget what law 1 says. Law 1 is very, very different to this. Law 1 says when you multiply powers of the same base, you add exponents. So sorry, that doesn't look like a 2. Let me make it bigger. If you have x squared times x to the power of 3, you would add those exponents to get a 5. So just don't forget what law 1 is. Law 1 says when you multiply powers of the same base, you actually add those exponents. So I get a 5. Whereas this says when you raise a power to another power, you multiply those exponents. So don't get confused on that. Right, we're going to be practicing law 3 a lot after we've done law 4. Okay, now law 4, we've done a little bit in class. Um, so I just want to do a couple of examples to show you what the long way to do it is. Now don't forget, if you're ever in doubt and you forget the laws, when in doubt, write it out. So what does it mean to square something? To square something means whatever you're squaring gets multiplied by itself. Now, very important here is you have these brackets. So this, this exponent belongs to whatever it is attached to. And it, it is attached to the entire bracket. So I'm just going to write myself a little note here. And please make sure that you're taking these notes all the time. It's attached to the entire bracket. Now, I've said this a lot in class. Now, because it's attached to the entire bracket, it means that you're multiplying the bracket by itself. So this is x squared y, and because I'm squaring it, I'm multiplying by itself. Now, this then goes back to law 1, because law 1 says when you multiply powers of the same base, so if I write down my x squareds together, and then my y's together, I can now simplify things as long as they have the same base. So when I multiply powers of the same base, I add my exponents, so 2 plus 2, and 1 plus 1, is 2. Now of course this line, the second line here, I wouldn't actually write in a test unless I was feeling uncertain. I would probably jump straight to the blue answer. But just to make sure that we're all on the same page. Your next question says, this cubed is attached to the bracket. So the entire bracket is cubed. So that means the entire bracket of 2x cubed y squared needs to be multiplied by itself three times. Now don't forget, we'll be writing, I mean I've said this a hundred times, when you multiply things together, you multiply signs, numbers, variables. So signs together, numbers together, and variables together. Now fortunately here there's no horrible signs, so my numbers are 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8. Now I get a bit lazy, I don't want to actually rewrite all the letters, but I've got x cubed, I've got x cubed, and I've got x cubed. Now don't forget when I multiply powers of the same base, I add exponents. I'm not multiplying them, so I get x to the power of 9. And then I have y squared, y squared, y squared, so I add my exponents and I get y to the power of 6. Now this is a perfectly acceptable way to do any question. When in doubt, write it out. Okay, a couple more ones just to illustrate a point. This question here is really important and it's something we love to ask because you have a negative. Now the question is where is that negative? It's inside the bracket. So this squared belongs to the whole bracket. So the entire bracket of negative 3x to the power of 4 
is repeated. So now when I decide to multiply signs, numbers, variables, remember every time you multiply or divide signs, numbers, variables, I now have a negative times a negative, which is a positive, so I'm not going to write anything. I have 3 times 3, which is 9. And then be careful, when I multiply powers the same base, I add exponents. So 4 plus 4 would give me 8. So in this case, the negative was repeated, and my negative times the negative cancel each other out. Whereas if I look at example 4, example 4 is here to illustrate the fact that this 2 here is not inside the bracket. Therefore, it is not connected to the exponent of 4. So when I rewrite this, sorry, to the exponent of 4, when I rewrite this, I'm not going to rewrite the 2 multiple times. That 2 is just 2. The only thing I'm going to rewrite 4 times is x squared y. So it's x squared y, x squared y, x squared y, x squared y, and all of a sudden you're starting to realize why we wanted to come up with a law. Because writing things out 4 times just starts to get a bit ridiculous. So signs, numbers, variables, there's only one number, so I just actually have to look at my variables. I have x squared, 2, 3, 4. So I have 2, 4, 6, 8. I have 8 x's multiplied by themselves, and I have 1, 2, 3, 4 y's multiplied by themselves. So most important here, this question was trying to show you the 2 was not inside the bracket, and therefore not connected to the exponent. Now that's exactly what this negative here. Technically, you can't have a negative. There's no such thing as just a random negative lying around. So technically, this is actually negative 1. And that negative 1 outside the bracket is exactly that. It's outside the bracket. So it's got nothing to do with this exponent. So I'm going to write here, this is not attached to the exponent. So it is not going to be re repeated, not attached to the exponent. Please make sure that you're getting down all these notes because this is how you're going to effectively study. So if I actually write this out, it's negative 1. You don't have to write the 1, but I'm just writing it for now. And then negative 2x cubed is in the bracket, so negative 2x cubed gets repeated twice. Okay, now I'm back to signs, numbers, variables, signs, numbers, variables. Now I've actually got three signs here because I've got a negative times a negative times a negative. So that's negative and negative make a positive and positive and negative make a negative. And then I have 1 times 2 times 2 which is 4 and finally my variables. So signs, numbers, variables. I have x cubed and then x cubed. When I multiply past the same base I add exponents. So basically, when in doubt, you can write it out. And as long as you understand who gets the exponents, you can't really go wrong. The only thing is, we start to get a bit lazy. And so we start to want to create shortcuts. And the shortcut is law 4. And law 4, I'm going to go over this quite slowly because it's really important. It says you can distribute the exponent to all the factors in the bracket as long as there is one term in the bracket. Now let me show you what I mean. What I mean is, is if you have an x and a y in the bracket and you have an exponent, I don't know, of m, let's say. What I'm saying is there's two factors in the bracket. This is factor number one and this is factor number two. But they're called factors because they are still one term. So as long as it's one term in the bracket, the exponent can be given to both factors. So this is x to the power of m, and this is y to the power of m. Now, it kind of makes complete sense, because if I have a look at example 1 again, now I've used exactly the same examples again. If I scroll up to where I've done number 1 before, there's number 1 before. Now watch what happens. Here I have x squared and x squared. Now that means that I technically have x squared squared. And when I wrote it out, I had y and y, which is y squared. So if you look at this, it basically means I've taken this exponent of 2 and I've distributed it 
to both of those factors in the bracket. And so I no longer have to multiple, you know, write this out multiple times. I can actually just distribute that exponent. So if I go down, I'm going to do exactly the same questions again, but using this new rule. So this new rule says that if I wrote this out, I would have x squared y and then x squared y. So I would basically have x squared squared and then I would have y squared. So that doesn't really look like a 2. Now, the wonderful thing is this is where I'm going to practice my law 3 because now I have the fact that I'm raising a power to another power and so I multiply. So I get x to the power of 4 y squared. Now in the long run we're going to go straight to the answer but while we're practicing in the beginning I'm going to write it out the long way. So this is 2 needs to be cubed. Now just be careful it's not 2 times 3 it's 2 cubed and then x cubed needs to be cubed and y squared needs to be cubed and that's exactly what the distributive law is. The distributive, the distributive law says that as long as there's one term each factor gets raised to that power. Now if I just simplify each factor 2 cubed is not 2 times 3 it's 8 when I raise a power to another power I multiply, so this is x to the power of 9. And when I raise a power to another power I multiply, so it's y to the power of 6. And I'm pretty sure that that's what we got in our previous one when we wrote it out. And look it is. But did you see how much faster that was? Okay, let's try some more. Let's go on to the next one. Now this one gets tricky. Because who gets squared? Not 3, but negative 3 gets squared and your x to the power of 4 gets squared. So you square, you distribute the square to both. Now I want to make a really big note here because if you use your calculator incorrectly here you're going to get the wrong answer. So I want you to write yourself a note here that says please note that negative 3 squared is not equal to negative 3 squared. This technically means, remember, an exponent only belongs to what it is directly attached to. So this is negative and the 3 is being squared. So this would be negative 9. The negative is not squared there. Whereas, if I change color, this, the negative 3 in the zero bracket. So the negative 3 is being squared, which is actually positive 9. So just be really careful that if you use your calculator here, or even if you don't, however you write this out, these brackets are absolutely essential because this is positive 9 because it was negative 3 times negative 3 and then x to the power of 8 because when I raise a power to another power I multiply. So just be really careful of that sign. It's a very common error in tests. Okay, on to the next thing. Remember the 2 is not got to do with the exponent. We've discussed that. And my 4 gets distributed to my x squared and distributed to my y's. So this actually becomes 2 x to the power of 8 y to the power of 4. So that is law 3 and 4 all in one question. So the law 4 part of this was distributing this to both factors and then the law 3 was raising a power to another power. Okay, last one. Oh, not last one. Uh, negative, like we discussed before, and then this would be negative 2 gets squared, not just the 2, and x cubed gets squared. So this actually becomes negative, and negative 2 squared is positive 4, so it's actually now negative times positive, which is negative, and x to the power of 6. Because when you raise a power to another power, you multiply. Now I've put in some extras here, simply because this one seems a little bit interesting because it's a fraction and we hadn't actually done a fraction before. Now fractions work exactly the same way. This exponent is distributed to everything in the bracket because it is all one term. So your 3 gets raised to the power of 4, your x gets raised to the power of 4 and your y cubed gets raised to the power of 4. Now if you wrote this out the long way you would be multiplying 4 fractions together which is just ridiculous. So it's much easier to lose law 4. Now 3 to the power of 4 you could use your calculator but I'm pretty sure that's 81 and x to the power of 4 and when I raise the power to another power I multiply. So most common mistake here is most people will say that this is 12. 
because what they do is they say three times four. So this is not 12 because, remember this is the symbol for because, it's three to the power of four, it's not three times four. So lots of people get used to the fact that when you raise a power to another power, then you multiply. So they see that and they're like, oh, I'm multiplying. And then they do the same thing with the numbers. So just be careful of that. Okay, just a couple of more. This one. This, oh, this is an interesting one. If you have a look here, what does a negative mean? There's no such thing as a negative. This technically means negative 1, x cubed, y to the power of 4, z squared, squared, which would mean I need to say it's negative 1 must be squared, x cubed must be squared, y to the power of 4 must be squared, and z squared must be squared. Now ultimately, to be honest, we generally end up going straight to the answer when we're really good at this, but while you're getting used to it, it's quite helpful to write these lines. So negative 1 squared is 1, so I don't even have to write that. When I raise a power to another power, I multiply. When I raise a power to another power, I multiply. When I raise a power to another power, I multiply. So in the long run, we want to go straight to the answer by doing law 4 and 3 in my head. But we'll get there. Okay, I think this is the last one. Now this is interesting because this is distribution, except that number already has an exponent. So it's 5 squared raised to the power of 5 and then x cubed raised to the power of 5. So when I raise a power to another power, I multiply, so this is 5 to the power of 10, and this is x to the power of 15. Now the question is, do I multiply out 5 to the power of 10? Do I pick up my calculator and work that out? Now if they're small numbers, like 5 cubed, or things that can be easily written, we would write it out. But 5 to the power of 10 will be a massive number. And so to be honest, we get a bit lazy, and, and we don't do it. Now that's the end of the note on law 3 and 4. So what we're quickly going to do is fill in the examples which were in your handout, the little textbook thing we've been making. So we're going to fill in these examples so they're in your textbook and then it's going to be a chance for you to go and try on yourself on your own. So first ones first, um, just so you've got a note written, this is raising a power to another power. So I will end up multiplying those exponents. Now normally I do that in my head and I'll get x to the power of 8. So that was our first example. This example was to teach you about distributing the exponent of 2. So this is 2 squared and x cubed squared, which lands me up with 4 x to the power of 6. Okay, next one, this is law 4, when you distribute an exponent. And then I'm going to be using law 3 because I'm going to be raising a power to another power. So this is x to the power of 4, y to the power of 6. This example would be so that you will remember that it's negative 3 in a bracket is being cubed and x squared is being cubed. And if you use your calculator to work out that negative 27 for you, you must have the bracket in it. Last two examples. This is negative 2 cubed, x cubed, and y squared cubed, which is negative 8, x cubed, y to the power of 6. And lastly, just so that you remember there's an invisible negative 1 there, this is negative 1 in a bracket, x to the power of 4, x squared to the power of 4, and y cubed to the power of 4. So this actually becomes positive 1, which means I don't actually have to write it if I don't want to, x to the power of 8, y to the power of 12. So this is just the six examples that are in your textbook type material so that you have some written examples there. Now what you need to go and do is try exercise 6. Exercise 6 is a mixed examples of, um, of law 3 and 4. So try those and then you can watch the video which shows you the memo. And then you can see how you're doing. Okay, good luck.